guys, so in this video I'm really excited to share a project that I've been cooking for about a month or so. It's called Open Recommender and the idea is to create an open source LLM powered YouTube video recommendation system that anyone can customize to their personal needs. So I've been interested in recommendation systems for quite a long time. Back in university, I had this dream of a recommendation system that could kind of analyze my browsing behavior, the articles that I was reading, the flashcard reviews that I did on a daily basis, and then extract and infer my interests from all of that data and search for YouTube videos in the background and then give me recommendations in the, in the evening for videos and podcasts that I could watch when I was too tired to do any more reading or coding. So it wasn't until very recently that I realized, obviously with the rise of large language models, the huge price decreases and the performance increases of small local models that are typically much cheaper to run at scale than OpenAI's APIs, that like the dream of a truly open and customizable recommendation system had kind of become possible. So what I did is I reached out to a company called OpenPipe and they are a company that specializes in the fine tuning of these small local open source models that kind of helps you incrementally switch from OpenAI's APIs, which are, as I said, very expensive, but very performant. It helps you switch from those to a smaller, faster, lower latency, kind of fine-tuned open source model. So the kind of the goals of Open Recommender are firstly, we need to understand the user's interests, right? So the approach that we're taking for this is to analyze your Twitter feed and look at your tweets, like the people you follow, likes, retweets, quotes, etc. And we want to infer and extract your interests from all of that data. Now, obviously not everyone has a Twitter account, but I feel like this is a good place to start because obviously the, the data there is publicly available information that people have willingly shared. So it's, it's ethical. And it's also quite an effective source of information about your interests because people only tweet about things that they are in some way interested in. So now let's talk about the current state of the project and what needs to be done to turn this into an actually useful product or service that people can use. So what I've gone ahead and done over the past month is build basically an MVP of the data pipeline. So at this point we can take the user's username and everything between that and actually giving them rec video recommendations is implemented in a kind of MVP state. So as long as I have the username, I can get the tweets, create queries, search YouTube, do all the filtering steps using GPT to filter it down to the most relevant things that will be interesting to the user and then actually recommend them uh, to the user. So what I want to do now is actually walk you through each of the steps, show you the code, show you it actually running just at a high level so you can understand um, what's been done so far. And then I also wanna talk about the next steps to go from here to basically making it a lot better because right now I'd say roughly 50% of the video recommendations are good, like surprisingly good. And then 50% just feel like they aren't hitting the mark like they should be doing, in my opinion. The, the current state is that we want to iterate on the prompts basically until around eight out of 10 of the recommendations are good. Then we can start looking into curating data sets, fine tuning and, and so on. In terms of the data pipeline and what it actually looks like, let me show you this diagram. Yep, there's just, it's, it's quite simple. It's just a linear sequence of steps. Like LLMs have made this so much easier than I think recommendation systems have been in the past because yeah, they can just do a huge amount of data processing. And yeah, you can just basically turn it into this kind of Lego brick gluing together kind of sequence, which is a lot simpler. So to begin with, we have this get tweet stage. We basically take the user's Twitter username as input and we're able to get the last 50 tweets or however many tweets we want. I've just started with 50 using this TW scrape library. So this is a Python library that kind of reverse engineered the unofficial GraphQL API that Twitter uses. It's basically the, the API that you use as a normal client when you're connecting to Twitter using your web browser as opposed to the public official API. All right, so now let me actually show you what it looks like from the command line. So if I run this command, it just grabs all of my tweets, outputs them as markdown. So yeah, we have normal tweets, we have likes, retweets, quotes, etc. All right, so yeah, the next stage is to create queries. 
So we basically use all of these tweets as input and we generate a bunch of YouTube search queries. All right, so now let's look at the next stage. So once we have the user's tweets, we can create YouTube search queries. Basically, it's kind of as you'd expect, it just outputs a bunch of YouTube search queries that we can use to find videos related to the user's tweets. So if I run yarn YT queries. So for this example, it's gone and analyzed the user's Twitter feed and it's extracted these arrays of keywords related to their interests. So for this, basically what I realized is that when you search YouTube, instead of writing in these full language sentences, you typically just write keywords, these very short kind of keyword phrases. So if I'm interested in large language models for recommendation systems, I just type something like LLM recommender systems or rec systems or rexis or something like that. So really short and concise. I think that's quite important because the, the more terms you add to the YouTube search results query, the more chance you have of kind of making it too specific and then filtering out a bunch of good videos. So actually getting this right, the create queries prompt is quite important determinant of the overall quality of recommendation system. So this is like a key area for improvement. If you're curious, you can go to the createqueries.ts file, take a look at the prompt here. There's at least two prompts in this file that I'm kind of running side by side to try and evaluate which one's better. But yeah, as I said, this one's really important to get right. I think at the top of the file, I even say, yeah, getting it right is critical to the success of the recommender. I think it either comes down to really nailing this one or coming up with an alternative approach that doesn't require making queries to search YouTube. But yeah, this one's really important. Okay, let's look at the next stage. So once we have the queries, we can search for videos using YTDLP, which is another kind of unofficial API, again, to get around kind of really severe rate limits and API restrictions. So let me show you that project. Yeah, it's, it's a fork of YouTube DL. It's, it's updated with all the latest like stuff. Let me show you on the command line what it looks like. Again, it's kind of what you'd expect. So yeah, if I just search for this, this is the query, this is the number of results I want. And it's just gonna give me back basically JSON from the API, which I then format into this Markdown representation. It's basically just a JSON format of what you see when you search for results on YouTube. So yeah, I get some pretty good results from that. All right, so once we've searched YouTube, we then need to filter the search results and we filter them using GPT. So GPT will look at this information and it will look at my tweets and it will decide, okay, which of these seems most relevant and it will kind of rank them in order of relevance. Let me show you the actual process in the code. Yeah, so I, I can basically explain this piece of code where we do the filtering. So filter search results, we take the raw search results and for each one, we basically, yeah, run a filter over it and making sure that they are basically relevant to the user's tweets and the query and then we filter them basically based on the relevancy kind of score that gpt gives it so the relevancy score is between zero and one and we say we only want videos that are quite relevant to the user's interests so this is kind of just a magic number at the moment that we kind of have to figure out and tune over time but i think it's like 0 0.65 at the moment but yeah this is this i'd consider kind of a pre-filtering stage because it's it's only looking at this information, which is quite simple, the search result. When we get further in the pipeline, we start adding more and more context for each candidate video. So we start adding things like the transcript, which you can use to assess the quality and the relevance of the video at a more granular level. So the next step is to download transcripts. That's very simple as well. Let me just show you quickly. So I already have an example here and yeah, it just the transcript. The penultimate stage is to appraise transcripts. And by appraise, what I mean is like kind of value it and basically judge it for its quality, whether it's just like some SEO spam, bait, low quality sensationalist garbage, or if it's actually like a really high quality video. That kind of requires looking at the transcript itself. You kind of have this situation on YouTube where even high quality content creators, videos with actually good, dense 
informative content, even those will have clickbait titles. So you can't just look at the title, you actually have to look at the video transcripts, physically what is being said, in order to determine how, you know, the quality of a video. So let me just quickly run that for you. Do I actually have a command for that? Okay, I don't actually have a command for that <laughs> setup right now, but yeah, this one's kind of cool because it's quite impressive how well it's able to detect spam. And then the final stage is to chunk up transcripts into one to two minute clips. So once we have a candidate set of videos, what we want to do is break them down into granular clips that people can easily skim to tell if they actually like the video. I kind of like the YouTube shorts kind of length of video and how easy it makes it to kind of skim over videos and stuff like that. So that's why I chose one to two minutes. Yeah, let me show you what it actually looks like to chunk a video. This one can actually be quite slow because it's going over the transcript and it's then basically creating a JSON object for each chunk. So it takes quite a long time for GPT-4 to create each chunk. Okay. Ooh, that looks wrong. I have to fix that after. But yeah, you get the idea. It's basically chunking things into chapters and trying to pick out the chapters that are going to be interesting to your, to, based on your Twitter feed. All right. So I think the final thing to do is just to run the full pipeline for you. It's going to be really slow. So I'll do a voiceover and, and tell you what's going on and maybe explain a little bit more about my ideas for the project going forward. So in order to run the full pipeline, I just run yarn, run main user. I use my own Twitter account and yeah, just let that cook in the background for a bit. All right, so I'm back. I went to go and have a cup of tea because obviously this pipeline takes a long time to run. There's a lot of GPT-4 calls, a lot of processing data to go through. Glad to see that it didn't throw an error at any point so far. As you can imagine, it's kind of annoying if it does throw an error and blow up pipeline because in order to debug the issue, you have to rerun from scratch. As you can see at this point, it's yeah, chunking up into segments looks like some of the segments are either too long or too short which is kind of annoying but you can get the idea like it's trying to find sections that are going to be interesting to you and it's actually giving you an explanation of why it chose it for you yeah it, this could be particularly insightful to your work on language models and content rec recommendation which is kind of cool i wish youtube did that like i wish it, you could understand why it was recommending certain videos to you Although the answer is probably just going to be because we most money for us and our advertisers. See, this is exactly related to what I'm doing literally right now, right? Generative AI data pipelines, which is kind of cool. Yeah. I probably wouldn't have searched for that on YouTube myself. That's the thing. I just feel like it's going to be super useful to have an LLM kind of agent doing this content search on my behalf and then just like emailing me with the results, just telling me, oh, look, I found this. I was doing a bunch of searches on YouTube. I found this. I think you might find it interesting. I felt like that is just so cool. Okay, so I realized that it's been a long time and we're still only around halfway through the pipeline. So I'm gonna cut off the video here. You get the idea. Basically, all that will happen in, at the end is it's just gonna log all of these chapters that it's generated into the console. But you've already seen them already because you've seen them as they're generating. But yeah, hopefully this has given you a good understanding of the project so far in its current state. And yeah, I'd like to make some more videos about the technical details and especially about the prompt iteration and evaluation, because I think that has been the most important part of the project so far. But yeah, if you have any ideas, share them. I'd love to hear them. And yeah, I'm looking forward to sharing like the progress on this project over the next couple of months. So yeah, thank you for watching.